way to uh, the office real quick to do some things. Then from that to the gym, uh, then uh, family time. But I wanted to ask you a very straightforward question. Now, the answers can be uh, extravagant sometimes because people have a way of reasoning and rationalizing things. But the question is simple. What are you doing to be the best version of yourself? Um, and I can tell you that the answer can't be I wake up every day and I go to work and I do a good job at my job and I come home. The question is, what are you doing to ensure that you're the best version of yourself? That means that you are intentionally taking action to advance yourself in knowledge, in skill, in awareness, uh, in impact, and, 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 and through your purpose. If you haven't given it any real, true, serious consideration, that is probably one of the reasons why you're not at your best. You're not where you deep down inside know you need to be. A lot of you are operating from your corner of comfort. Uh, you've done fairly well in life. You know, you uh, did what you have to do to put yourself in a situation in the job market where you make uh, what would be considered a decent salary. And I want to express that when I talk about being your best version of yourself, your income and your financial status is only a part of that. And, and it's important to understand that because a lot of us get caught up solely in what we have in the way of material things. And we lose sight of the more weightier things in life. And there are much more weightier things than uh, your finances when you truly understand life. Now, don't get me wrong. You need money to do the things that you want to do. You need money to do the things you need to do. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with money in and of itself. Uh, but you got to understand it in the grand scheme of things. So when I'm talking about doing what you need to do to be your best self, ensuring that you're your best self, that's just one part of it. But at the same time, many of you have uh, reached a point where you live comfortable lifestyles. You don't have to worry about whether the bills are going to get paid, even in a time of economic upheaval and uncertainty due to the pandemic. You've done fairly well or even better than fairly well. So there's no impotence or urgency in the sense of being better so that you can earn a better living because you're good. Uh, you know, you have a, a circle of friends and everybody in your circle is probably somewhere along the line in the same socioeconomic range as you. So there's nobody in your circle that makes you uncomfortable because they are so far ahead of you. Uh, so everybody's pretty much around the same way or you are out in front of most of your friends so you feel a certain level of uh, uh, you know, if not superiority, definitely. Hey, I'm I'm that dude, or I'm that I'm that I'm that woman, and 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 so you still have no impotence or urgency to make moves. See, that's because you're comparing yourself to the wrong things. You're comparing your finances to what the average person makes you. You're comparing your situation to the other people in your periphery. You're comparing yourself to the people you see on a regular basis. That's not what you should be comparing yourself to. Matter of fact, you shouldn't be comparing yourself to any other person. The only thing you should be comparing yourself to is to your potential. How does the current you measure up to what you're capable of? Not what you're doing, but what you are capable of. At what level are you living at versus what level you could be living at? And again, this is so much further and beyond material living, but it includes that. Uh, you know, what kind of impact uh, on the world are you making? And if you can't even vision or envision yourself making an impact on the world, then that speaks volumes because you've shrunk yourself you shrunk yourself into a corner of comfort where your impact is restricted. You have the capacity 
to make an impact on a grander scale. Not for the sake of proving anything to anybody else, but for the sake of living out the fullness of your purpose. One thing you hear me say on a consistent basis is that I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on it. And all that means is every day I'm looking at the capacity I have to make a difference in this world, to become better, to become more forceful, to make my presence felt in a positive way. And I'm going to give the, give those uh, 84,600 seconds everything I have for that day. Whether it's how I rest and sleep at night, to how I wake up in the morning, to how I take charge of my day at the beginning, to how I manage the challenges of the day, to how I reach beyond my comfort zone to touch people, to how I focus on maintaining my calm and confidence in the most trying of times, in the most difficult moments, to everything, because everything matters. People are watching, people are observing, people are listening, people are feeling, people are hearing, all of those different things. People see you when you don't think they see you. They're looking at how you handle the difficult moments. They're looking at how you handle the frustrations. They're looking at how you handle the challenges. They're looking to see if you become frustrated, if you become frenetic and unglued. They're looking at all of that. And you're impacting the world when they see you rise to the occasion. You don't have all the answers, but you're not yet. You're not shaken. And, and people ask, well, how is that possible? And you get to explain. That's changing the world. It's not just in what you drive. It's not just in where you live. It's not just in that. We need to expand our understanding of success. We need to really and truly gain uh, a full perspicacity of what it means to be impactful. Not what the world defines it, but what your capacity and gift says about you. Your capacity and your gift, your capacity being your potential, your gift being the means through which you fulfill that potential, and you sitting up and saying, I can do better. How can I do better? I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to grow intentionally. I need to set a plan. I need to have a focus. I need to see a vision. I need to know what's ahead of me. I need to know how I'm going to get there. Now, all of that may change in time because life is evolving, but I, I've got to start and I've got to move and I've got to be better. That needs to be a way that I can measure myself every day and know that I'm a little better than I'm asleep. The one way that I guarantee that I don't go to sleep the same way that I woke up is by learning something new every day, literally every day diving into something and discovering something I didn't know. And I've done this for years. I read over a hundred books a year. And yes, it can be done, even with my busy schedule. So I know if I can do it, it can be done, but it takes commitment. It has to be a passion. It has to be something in it that you see that makes it worth it. I started this nearly 20 years ago. I was already reading a lot, but then I read about uh, someone I happened to be studying at the time, John Wesley, who was the uh, founder uh, of the, uh, was, who's known as the father of the Methodist movement. And I found that he read a hundred books in one year. And I said, I can do that. And that became my thrust. Now imagine um, writing a hundred I mean, reading 100 books a year and having written 24 and about to um, put in the work to finish out book number 25. That's just a part of me being better every day. It's a part of me saying that's the way I can measure my production and my impact in this world because all of the work I put into learning and I re-express it in the things that I write, in the things that I speak, in the things that I teach, in the things that I lecture that are being recorded and kept. I'm leaving an indelible print on the world now, but because it's being recorded and can be revisited, if there'll be people who never met me who will still feel my impact. One thing that I always say is, my goal is not just to affect someone, it's to infect them. When you infect someone, 
you are contagious with whatever it is, contagious with faith, contagious with passion, contagious with positive energy, contagious with hope, uh, and, and whatever. And when you infect them, they become, they put on the same symptoms. They, put, they, 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 they have hope now, they have passion, they sense purpose, they're moving forward, but they're contagious. So they go out and impact other people. Now they're impacting people that don't know you, have never met you, but they are receiving your infection that will empower them in their lives. That's my goal. So on that note, look, do something positive. Make up in your mind that you're gonna do something that changes not only your life, but those who encounter you. Be the best version of yourself. On that note, check out the description box and look for resources that will suit you. Make some moves, make some changes, make some commitments, do what you have to do. On that note, I'm out of here. As I always say, I am going to live my life on full so that I die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. I'm out of here. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.